Hi everyone, it's Frederick Wermling again. Uh, in this very short video, I want to discuss very briefly how, or some ideas about how you can design primers for sequencing and identifying your mutation that's been introduced by your guide RNAs. Um, and I'm going to use an example here coming from a very talented postdoc in my lab called, uh, you know, his name is Dr. Sanya Bodil. Uh, and what he was doing in this screen here, this is actually just setting up a test screen. He's trying to identify genes that affect T cell development in vivo. Uh, so he chose some genes that are relevant for, for T cells. And then, uh, of course, as you can see in a lot of these different videos, just input the list of genes here. You choose a reference library. We oftentimes use the Dolmage library, the mouse one. Um, add adapter sequences with that you need for cloning and then you press run and you get out the list right? and if you look at this here so here are the different genes here are the guide and different guide RNAs in red and here are the overhangs or the, um, that we use for cloning this into the lent guide puro uh, using gibson assembly um, so i'm just going to show you then so let's say that we introduce this guide RNA in a cell and there is introduction of, of, of a mutation and you want to sequence that and of course you need primers flanking that region. So there's many ways of doing this, but I'm just going to show you a, a quick example here, which me and, and Dr. Bodle has been discussing. Um, so here's the guide RNA targeting uh, PDCD1, which as you probably know is a popular gene. So let's look at it here. PDCD1, perm cell death one, um, comes on one, looks something like this, simple gene. Um, Popular because it's a target for immune, uh, cancer immunotherapy, very promising and such. Um, so what you could consider doing, of course, now I know this, this guide RNA is targeting exon 2 here. This is in the reverse stream. So exon 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 um, is, of course, then to get out the genomic sequence here. Or th There's many ways of doing this, but one, one way we take out the genomic sequence um, and then design primers that flank this region, right? And that's probably what most people would, would do or you can do it in different ways but and that's a very feasible approach um i just want to highlight a software called uh, chop chop um this is was published first in 2014 by this constellation the second version version 2 came out in 2016 and it's in essence or it is actually a software that you use to design uh guide RNAs or to identify guide RNAs for your gene so let's see here, then we have our PDCD1 gene, mouse, CRISPR. Uh, interesting, you can use in the cases, tailings, CFPF, CPF1, etc. Um, and a lot of different um, uh, targets, uh, species. Uh, so it's, it's a very useful software. And you press find target sequences. And my internet connection is not the best where I'm sitting right now. So it's a little bit slow for that. Um, so what we got up here, and this is what I like about this software, is that you get kind of or I, there's several things that are interesting. But one thing is that it's 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 graphically very nice. So you, it's graphically representing the exon one, two, three, four, and five. And up here are all the different identified guide RNAs. So this is one, 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 etc. So there's probably hundreds here, right? And the color indicates how good they're supposed to are. And so this is software where you, if you want to target this gene, you might take the five first and say, okay, I'm going to use these ones. Or you might think, okay, all of these are, most of these are exon two. Let's take exon two, exon five, exon three, for example, or something like that, depending on your strategy. Um, but that's not what I'm going to use it for now. I'm going to use it for a different purpose. So I'm going to identify the guide RNA that we used. So this is the one that Dr. Bodel used in his, or is using in his screen, test screen, setup screen. So here is the guide RNA and that's the PAM sequence. And actually, if you double click this, you get up uh, a close, close up on the exon, exon two here. Here is the guide RNA and the PAM sequence is here. And here is the supposed cut site. And then there's suggested primers that you could use for sequencing. So PCR amplifying this region. So let's say here, for example, this one here starts here and ends here. And then you have your, your forward, your reverse primer, and you get the, uh, a TM value and you got a product size here. So it's a very convenient way 
to identify primers to amplify this. The only thing I want to say here is that if you would use this for, I mean, if you want to use this for sequencing for using regular Sanger sequencing, of course, you need to consider if the primer is in a good distance related to where you expect to have your mutations. So this one, for example, I think probably, although I'm not sure, I haven't looked at it, but I, I'm guessing that this prime sequencing from this direction would not be optimal, for example, considering that the first bases are usually not showing up in sequence. But from here, it might be good, right? All right, so that was it. That was all I wanted to discuss. I'm gonna try to put myself up here again and <laughs> say goodbye. Good luck.